You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. Mm. And then he said, just cough while I'm holding them. Mm. So I did. It's not often you hear that in a fruit and vegetable, is it? <laughs> it isn't, no. I was quite surprised. They'd only come in for a couple of plums. And he said, I know, sir. <laughs> oh. <laughs> At least he didn't give you a right peach. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Chewing the Cud. How, how are you, Mike? Have you, what have you been doing with, on the internet lately? <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from my OnlyFans account, which we won't talk about now. Because oh. it doesn't exist. Um, I've been having a Google around for some tidbits. I found nice. a couple of bits that I'm going to flop out for you later. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Look forward to that. On screen now, you can see our contact info. Yep, it's at the Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us, the Cud.tv for our website, and on YouTube or podcast services, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as name is bounce along like a tigger on a sugar rush, we get ready for this week's show, Biz with Lee. <laughs> Did you know, Mike? No, but I'm sure you're about to tell me. <laughs> that Superman is 80 years old this very year. Oh. Oh. He looks well for his age. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. So 80 years... Dean Cain of... doesn't. No. We're going to talk about him in a minute. Okay. Mm. So, DC Comics, mm -hmm. um, who draw Superman, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, okay. they have announced that the son of Lois and Clark, mm. who is called John Kent... Okay. He is... A bisexual. Okay. A bisexual. A bisexual. He is a bisexual. He is bisexual. Okay. So he's going to be yeah. a bisexual Superman. Okay, cool. Okay. So um, it's the fifth issue of the series Superman, Son of Kyle. Is that Superman's actual name? Kyle? Is it not? What's his real name, Mike? <laughs> Kal-El. Kal-El. <laughs> Kal-El. It's all the same to me. It's the same it's thing. The it's same. an alien's name. So, it's yeah. made up. So he, he, so he has discovered that He's bisexual. Okay. After um, falling for a male reporter oh. called called Jay Nakamura. I think I've said that right. Nakamura, yeah. something like that. Something like that. Um, so yeah. Um, so um, he's kind of like he has a bit of a. Has it been a Superman's hard work? Mm -hmm. You know, I know, you know, because we are. Um, it's spandex. So, so, <laughs> so he has a little a bit of a to get stains out. Mm, bit of physical and, and mental burnout. Okay. Trying to save everybody that he can. Mm -hmm. So he takes some time to himself, and that's when he kind of discovers his his sexuality. Oh, that's nice. So that's great. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, it, the slowly introducing LGBTQ plus characters into mm -hmm. the DC universe. DC universe. Mm -hmm. So we've had um, Tim Drake, who is one of the many Robins. I didn't know there was more than one Robin. Yeah, yeah, a couple of Robins. Is there? Yeah. Um. <laughs> um <laughs> So he he has dated another male in the comic world. Mm -hmm. Batwoman, also known as Kate Kane, mm -hmm. um, is also had relationships with women in the okay. in the th and I think in the TV series. Yeah, yeah. She she's she's gay. Um, Poison Ivy mm -hmm. recently came out, okay. and then we've got transgender. She had, she, she had a, a thing with um, what's the face from Suicide Squad. If you say so. Well, the one with the hair. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, yeah. Oh, good, they good. had a bit of a frisson. A little frisson. Yeah. Um, and, um, was that a bison freeze? No, oh, that's a dog. dog. Yeah. No. So, yeah, we've all, and they've also introduced um, a scientist called Victoria October, who is mm -hmm. transgender. So they're kind of making progress. Good. But as with everything, mm -hmm. some people are not happy. So you mentioned Dean Kane at yeah. the beginning. He's not happy. He doesn't I don't think. Care. Oh. He I mean, he played Trump. Superman 400 years ago. Um, so yeah, he 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 just doesn't think that it should happen, and weirdly, mm. um, Christopher Biggins. What? It's like rah, 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 I shouldn't be doing. Rah, rah. I mean, who cares? That's their concern. The concern is not the fact that Superman is eighty. Mm. He's got a teenage son. Yeah. How old is Lois Lane? And he's not real. Well, if we're going to pretend that they're real and have an outrage about a, a cartoon character, I mean, oh, I've just thought You've they got... could do cartoon porn. There is cartoon porn, Mike. No, as in for, for Superman. No, there is. For this... Yeah, there is. Direct, no, official DC porn. Oh, I don't think they do that. Well, they could do. But if you go on the web, you can get you can get superhero porn, cartoon porn. Can you really? Mmm. Look it up. <laughs> you just carry on, I'll be busy. You'll be, I, I think you'll find you'll be very satisfied. Um, so, yeah, 
some stra- ste- steps forward. Yeah, yeah, do you think? Do you like that? I don't know. You can do that with a tentacle. Oh, sorry. Now, we're going on to one of our favourite people. <gasps> Madonna. Gemma Collins. Oh. So we have re- we've spoken about Gemma Collins in the past where she gave her garden a makeover in the, in, during lockdown, yada, yada, yada. She's going to have a baby, um, but she's going to do it all on television. Yeah, Probably actually conceived the baby on television, yeah, knowing yeah. Gemma Collins. So she, she has announced that she's going to have at least three weddings. So she's been going out with her boyfriend, um, Rami Hawash, for... So I think she saw him... Initially for a long time, and then they split up, and then she went out with the other one, Arj, and then got back together again. Okay. So yeah, so she, she she has decided that she's she's going to have three massive weddings. So she said, "I'll have a good wedding. I'm probably going to have three, three okay. like that." Thing is, she loves a good wedding. Mm. I have a sneaking suspicion that <laughs> none of those will be good weddings. <laughs> so she's going to have a real one, a real one, real one, right? Um, and then she's going to have a Shelby's one. Okay. Um, and then she's going to have an honest wedding. An honest wedding? Yeah, and I don't really know what that honest wedding is. Well, one will pay. Somebody else will get somebody to pay for it. Yes, yeah, like Hello. Yeah. Or OK Magazine. Um, or um, Take a Break. Yeah. Bella. That kind of stuff. <laughs> is, that, um, is that still a magazine, Bella? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking like it's just still 17. <laughs> yeah. So she's, she's, so that we've, got, we've got that to look forward to whenever. Um, probably this time. She makes me angry. She's she's a, one of the she's a celebrity who is not famous for for being good at anything. She's just famous for being there. Yeah, she just exists. She she she's there. And what makes me angry is marriage equality took years and years and years and years and years for the LGBT community. It's not available everywhere in the world. But she can have three fucking marriages. Oh, right. She's just so she, your chain, she, she? She, she she makes me angry, viscerally angry, viscerally angry. Yeah. Now to be fair. In the world of the Gemma Collins, mm-hmm. th- these kind of situations don't last for very long. They, you know, she might, if she wants she to have might, three weddings, she might, she might live happily weddings. ever after. And I, I hope they have all the success and love in the world. And I mean that genuinely. But three weddings, come on, take a break. Yeah. I'm sure that Gemma Collins has got loads of fans. I don't know any. I know a lot of people that enjoy her. Oh. But in a, in a laughing at her kind of way. Oh, okay. I mean, she's probably having the last laugh. She probably she's knows. Making a fortune. She's making a fortune. She's living her best life. Yeah, she's enjoying herself, which is all that matters. I just wish that she wasn't doing it on my TV. But you can't turn it over, Mike. Oh, I can't joint. turn this over. You're talking about it now. I know. Well, okay, so all the viewers, you can come back now. We stopped talking about Gemma Collins. Bit of music news. Ah, oh, musical news. So a little bit of old school brought together with a little bit of new school. Okay, so, so is that middle school? No, it's it's, mm. it's a fusion. 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 A fusion. So we've got, we've got, for the old school, we've got Karine David. He doesn't like people doing that. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> it's a joke from 15 years ago. <laughs> Craig David has teamed up with m Love m We've got them on screen now. Mm-hmm. I have a bit of a thing for m Do you? Mm. Have you seen him on Gogglebox? Yes. With Ollie Alexander from years and years? Yes, there's a, there's a sofa I want to be part of. What are, you, what are we thinking about Craig David? Also a bit... Yeah. Have you had a bit of a thing for Craig David? Well, it's it's a, a guilty pleasure from my youth, isn't it? So. Oh, OK. Yeah, him and Peter Andre. Oh! OK. Um, so they have joined... I just give them a bit of a lick. I, I don't want to... I don't want to... don't want to... Um, That's not for me, not for you. I don't want to... I don't want to think about it. Oh, yeah. So they've joined forces for a song called Who You Are, mm-hmm. which is going to be that the lead single from Craig David's new album, which, which is coming out... Um, Imminently. Okay. Um, it's going to be called 22. Oh. I'm not quite sure why that is, because he's not 22. Is it not because he's been in the industry for 22 oh, years? Oh, it is. That's indeed. That, that Reading about a little right. bit further on. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's, it's um, uh, this is what they're calling it. It's an elegant garage style strings track. Okay. Okay. So on screen now we have um, a still from the video. Okay. Not, not neither of them are in it. But then there's words. There's words, there's a lyric. And there's television. It looks very similar to our opening credits, actually. That's the thing they've ripped up. And, and you were right, it's 22 years since Craig David's debut, in case you were wondering. Oh. Um, yeah. So he, so he first bur- burst onto the scene with... Well, he did The Artful Dodger first, didn't he? D- did he? Well, it, <laughs> well, he featured on that song by Artful Dodger. Oh, OK. Re Rewind. When the crowd say Bo Selector. That and one. He never lived it down. He never lived it down. <laughs> never lived it down. Ever. It's That's proper Bo, I tell me. 
That's why he left the country, because he just could not cope with people going, Green David. So, yeah, if, if that is, it's quite an interesting combination because mm -hmm. you don't necessarily sort of think, when you think of Craig David, you don't necessarily think of the LGBTQ community. You don't, but when you think of M&EK, you do. So, so the message of the song is that you've got to be your most authentic self. Sexuality doesn't matter. So, yeah, if, you, if that's your kind of thing, go to Our Price and get the CD single. No. Our, our Price. <laughs> Now, for anybody who was born after 1997, that was a music shop like HMV, mm. which is also gone. Yeah. Um, you, what do you do nowadays? Do you stream them? Do you do you download it? Do you do you what do you do? Just yeah. What do you do with the music now? Where does it go, Mike? Where does it doesn't it... matter? Does it just appear? It's available wherever you would normally get music. Well, there you go, Grandma. And that's in the showbiz news. Well, that was an insight that nobody needed, wanted, or asked for. You're welcome, Mike. But stick around us next. It's Mike in the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's have him bring us the buzz. How's your bush? Fair to middling. Is it, is, it in, is it trimmed? It's a kind of a case of what's left. What's left? It's getting a bit threadbare, Mike. Get thre threadbare? Same. Is it because it's autumn? Yeah. Not, I, I'm not talking about autumn your... Autumn of my life. I'm not talking about your downstairs area. I'm oh, talking okay. about your topiary. Um, well, it's getting to that time of year where again it's threadbare. Is it not box? No, it's not an evergreen. You've not got a box bush? No. Okay, because um, I've got a story here about a gardener who's lovingly cultivated his 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 topiary, mm. and has been told he must trim it. Must he? He must trim his bush after twenty years. Really, that's a long time to yeah. grow your bush. Yeah. So the council have basically said um, that he needs to trim it after it's, he's been growing one that looks like a giant middle finger, flipping off the um, pub opposite. I mean, in that picture, he's going, I know what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, he's done it on purpose. Oh, he's done it on purpose. Yeah, so it started off because the, the local pub opposite, mm. yeah, everyone was mocking him for his topiary curls and stuff. Okay. So they're going, I'll get a proper the job sort of thing. World. It's a cruel world. People are drunk coming out of the pub. Yeah, they're either lovely or evil. Yeah. Drunk people. Um, or slutty, that's the magical third one. Um, but basically he said, well, you're going to mock me, I'm going to flip you the massive finger. Right. Okay, so this is in the late 90s, something like 1999 oh. of this. Um, so since the year 2000, the bush has been there as a middle finger. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the locals have had it as a bit of a local landmark. Enjoying the, the bit of a joke, you know, and that sort yeah. of thing. He's been keeping his bush trimmed so mm -hmm. everyone can see it. Until very recently, someone's physically complained. Physically complained? Physically complained. So going to the local council, oh, okay. going, no, no, that's offensive. Okay. And so he's been told he has to trim it. So he's got to chop the finger off. Well, if the council have suggested maybe they, he changed it into a fist because that's less offensive. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but difficult to go from a middle finger to a fist. Because he's only done the one finger. It just, he just chops it off. So that it'll just be... Too, yeah, wouldn't work. No. No. Um, but what, what he's also done is he's shared the, the picture of the other side of the bush. So okay. like the, the structure of the bush, so you if you like. You can see what it looks like. So you can see what it looks like, which we have a picture of here. Um, <laughs> and if you have a look, it looks a little bit like a cock and balls. <laughs> you see, I'm not getting that either. Are you not getting cock and balls? I can see, look, like, that looks like a fingernail. Yeah, yeah, so that's the fingers. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so he's, he's done the fingers around the back. Right. Right, when it looks a bit testicular. It looks... <laughs> With a growth. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not a pleasant looking it, thing. It doesn't look well. No, I mean, no. but... You know, it's his tree, he can do what he wants with it, can't he? Topery. 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 Googly eyes on it. Massive googly eyes. That's all it needs. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> feature. <laughs> yes, there's, a, there's an option, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, googly eyes on a massive finger. That wouldn't look dodgy <laughs> at all. Um, shall we move on? Yeah. Because I want to go on to something more serious. Oh. Okay. Um, I don't often cover serious things. No, you don't, Mike. No, but this is a story about a, a, a man who's lost his wife recently. Oh. Lost as in she's gone to heaven or lost as she's just wandered off and he doesn't know where she is? Well, a little bit worse than that. <gasps> she has been transformed by UFOs. No. Into a toffee crisp. 
Hush, I hate it when that happens. When UFOs come and steal your wife and turn her into I a topic know. list. I know, I don't know how many wives I've lost to that. So this is a story about Ray Peters, mm. who said he's at his wit's end after space aliens zapped his missus and, um, into a, a toffee crisp bar. No way. Right. He said that there were no problems in the marriage. Yeah, they'd been married for, for 20 years and he popped down to find his wife missing and found a toffee crisp in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> was he wearing clothes? <laughs> no, just on the floor in the kitchen of Toffee Crisp. Was it in a wrapper? Yeah. Right. But the way neither him or his wife liked Toffee Crisps. Oh my god. So they wouldn't, have bought, they wouldn't have bought it. They wouldn't have bought it. It's face. got to have been aliens. Oh my god. How did he know? Did it say Because she was missing. But it <laughs> Did right. it speak? Did she speak? So no no. Did the... you hear me, Ray? <laughs> so <laughs> she, they found the Eileen hates toffee crisps and so does he. Oh. He found the toffee crisp on the kitchen floor of the two million pound five bedroom house. Oh, wow. Right. Um, and she's just disappeared. No, but she's not. She's a toffee crisp. She's a toffee crisp, but yeah, she's not alive anymore. Well. So, you know, life insurance payout. Oh. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Um, I couldn't get hold of, of Ray himself to get him on the show. No. No. But I have managed to get hold of. <laughs> Is Eileen here? Yeah, Eileen's here. She's in your cupboard. Oh my God, Eileen. Eileen, come, come out on. Come on. Oh, there's, oh, there's, there's two. What? Oh. Is, that, is that like a sister? Or, or, or our producer's not, not in today. Oh no. Yeah. So we've got Those yeah. pesky aliens. Pesky Eileen. aliens turning people into toffee crisps again. Eileen. I care for her. She wanted me to come on her. Come on, Eileen. That's what she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you're just eating up a egg guest. Sorry, Eileen. <laughs> you're, not, you're not even looking at Eileen. Sorry, Eileen, but I'm just eating you. Wow. So where was I? I mean, oh, she's very sticky. Sticky to the roof of my mouth. <laughs> Is she? Well, well, where was she? In the kitchen. I mean, if they lived in a two point five million pound house, mm -hmm. I think she'd have been turned into something like a. You know, something exotic. Yeah, something like a exotic. tube of Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> something nice like or a that. Toblerone. Or a Toblerone. Yeah, because they're expensive. You know, the big ones from the airport. Yeah, a bounty. No one wants a, a bounty. segment one. No one wants a bounty. I like a bounty. And that makes you a freak. Um, but yeah, so they, they booked a holiday. They were due to fly out. Oh. Right, came home, find, find a toffee crisp from Space Aliens. Um, Did the, the aliens leave a note? Just to let him know. They, they sorry. Didn't. They we didn't turn your wife into a toffee crisp. We're really sorry about that. Back back soon. Nope. No. Nope. Um, a source at Toffee Crisp Makers Nestle. Um, so a source from Nestle have actually turned around and said, we've not got time for bollocks like this. <laughs> she didn't have any bollocks. <laughs> She's a toffee crisp. <laughs> toffee crisp. Didn't even have to fingers. No. She's got one now. <laughs> it's a finger of chocolate. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, <laughs> lots of people from America have got involved saying, oh yes, aliens have oh. turned people I know into chocolate bars and condiments and things. Oh my God, things. I've got a marathon, yeah. Grandma. <laughs> marathon? Snickers bar. Snickers. Snickers. Story from the 1980s. It was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my nan is now a Snickers bar. Um, but you, there's actually a, a Twitter account where you can actually report people being turned into things by aliens as oh, well. Oh, okay. So there's no happy ending to this. Eileen is, is still remains a toffee crisp. Eileen still to remains a toffee day. crisp. To this stuff. To this toffee day. <laughs> to this toffee day. <laughs> to this toffee day. Yes. Oh no. Which is a shame. It is a shame. But also mainly because he doesn't like toffee crisps. Oh, I mean that bodes well though, doesn't it? it means he's not going to eat her. Yeah. But then Hall Halloween's happened, so we don't know whether the. Perhaps Pick he puts her in a special place. Like where? I don't know, like a little cloche, like a little glass cloche, like on like on them. Um, <laughs> like the rose of beauty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I knew that was very good. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's 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 possible. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but if you find something that you want to share with us and people being turned into other things other than chocolate bars, that's acceptable. Just tag us at the Could TV on all of your usual social media websites. And that brings us to our story of the week. How do you know you're going to have a good day? I've woken. Okay. Which is always a good sign. I checked for the obituary. If my name's not in there, oh, I'm going to get up and have fine. breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, a new TikTok trend has started mm. called a Bones Day. Yeah, great. So you can have a bone day or a no bone day. Right. 
which I thought was something very different. Because mm. I know when I wake up, if I've got a bone day, I'm very happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not that, unfortunately. This is a story about a TikToker called Jonathan and his dog, 13-year-old pug called Noodle. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what he does is he wakes Noodle up in the morning. And if Noodle wants to get out of bed... Okay. He's, he's called a bones day. Right. And we're going to go out and be positive and do things in the world. And it's going to be a good day. And if Noodle doesn't get up, it's a no bones day. So he just stays at home. Just stays at home, chills out, looks after himself. It's that kind of thing. Okay. Right. Does he have very Does he have very understanding employers that allow that? He, he's he's on TikTok a lot. Oh, is he is he an, is he an influencer? I think he's a TikToker. Oh. TikToker rather than influencer. Oh. Would you like to see him rise his his bone in the morning? Not really, but I think you're going to show us I'm anyway. I'm going to show you a little bit of a video. Thank you. Back in the morning, I was getting ready for bed, and I was I was hoping and wishing for a Bones Day. Oh my gosh, and we got one! Oh, we got one! Look at that! Look at him, like, standing like a deep-rooted tree. Oh, Noodle, thank you for your bounty. Okay, it's a Bones Day, and you know what that means. You gotta treat yourself today. Get the scallion pancakes with your takeout order. I don't care if you finish them. Get that deliriously expensive candle. Bask in your good fortune and have a great weekend. That dog is going... Just let me I, I want to go. It's got, I, I like, want to go over that rainbow not, bridge. No bones day, just sleep. Yeah. Down. Take me to that vet. Give me that injection. I've had enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it thinks it's going. It's like, you're going oh, to stand up. Day, it's like, going, oh, this is the day. This I'm is finally... the day. Bones day means euthanasia <laughs> day. No, it's finally going to be released from my misery. Mm -hmm. And he's like, woo, bones. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Um, but on the plus side, other people have gone, well, it's a Bones Day, so I've treated myself to things like a lottery ticket and won $500,000. Oh. But just a coincidence. It is a coincidence, yeah, because it's it's mm. saying whether the dog can predict the future. Okay. Um, but that, that's it from the buzz this week. Oh, thanks, Mike. Um, you know, I've, I've never known anybody turn into a Taffy Crisp, but I've shoved a Twix up my... <laughs> Stick around, because coming up, we've got Game of the Week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we are playing our favourite oral skills game of Uza Kazoo. Which makes a change for Mike to have something shoved up his... No, actually, no, just, just off you go, Mike. Go on. Take your keister off to the kazooster. Okay. Puts things in my mouth. If... Game of the Week. The rules are quite simple. All Mike has to do is to try and play a noise that is recognisable, that I can guess the song. Are you ready, Mike? <laughs> I think that means yes. Give us the first one. It's from your era of music, it's the from 1990s. from my era of music. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll give you a clue. <laughs> Had the same hairstyle. Oh. <clears throat> Is it right said Fred, I'm too sexy? No, it was um, <laughs> Nothing Compares to You by Sinead O'Connor. Oh. Did the tear. Mm. You know, more moist on my face. Next one, then, please, Mike. Okay, next one. Is it that one? Is it, um, now you're back from outer space? No. Do 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 look upon your face? No. No. Bomb. 
bum, 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 oh, bum, Groove bum, is bum, in the heart. There we go. By Delight. <laughs> yeah, by Delight, well done, yeah. It's a shame when I have to cheat for you, isn't it? Next one. <laughs> They all. They all sound the same. That means nothing. I'm dancing along. I mean, that... I'm, I'm living my best life over here <sighs> in, a, in a toilet cubicle. Let's go outside. Is it outside by George Michael? Yeah! It's just, it should have been yeah, yeah, it didn't cubicle. Know. I'm having to give you hints now. Yeah, because they all sound like no matter what it is. You should get this one. You won't, but you should do. Is it? She shall find a fishy on a little dishy when the boat comes home. That's when the boat comes in. Comes in. And no. No. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, I should. Oh, I should be so lucky, but I can't even. There we go. <laughs> it's a shame when Mikazu falls out of the mouth, isn't oh, it? God, can we play that synonym game again? <laughs> The love boat. What? The love boat. The love boat. Do 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 do. No. Not that. They're the same song. <laughs> That you just didn't take. It figures. It's now I know what it is. What is it? It's it's um Alanis Morissette. Yeah. Ironic. Yes. <laughs> when you're looking upside down, it's like this going, I don't know. Is it, is it, um, tonight we're gonna party like it's 19 by Prince? It is indeed, yeah. It's almost like I said the name of the it's song. It's almost like you said the name of the song, yeah. Okay, we ready. Mm hmm. <laughs> that is the theme tune to the Golden Girls. That's right. I know. Because it sounds like it. Not like every other song you've done that just got and then the, the name of the thing. <laughs> yeah, thrown in because you're looking at me like, I don't know, Mike. I'm not gifted like you. Okay. You see, now you've gone back. <laughs> Think about a song lyric, a theme tune to a TV show that's just muttering. Is it only fools and horses? Horses. No. <laughs> <laughs> All about how. Oh, rapping! The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It is the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, yeah. God, has this been going on for about an hour now? Yeah. <sighs> Trying to find things that you'd be doing. <laughs> this is one you won't get because it's an awful TV show. 
That's the entire theme tune. Is it, is it a new one? Is no, it's from, from the 90s. From the 90s? Mm -hmm. <sighs> one foot in the grave? No. It's the TV show Sybil. Carl. <laughs> what? As if anybody knows that. It's on my list. <laughs> I've not made this list up. But how did you know what it was? Did you not watch Sybil? Yeah, but I can't remember the theme tune. Because it's um, loving one who loves you and then taking that bow. Nice work if you can get it. And if you get it, you gay won't child. you tell me how. Yeah. Do, do, do. Dumb. That's just an insight into your, your world. Though, I used it? to stay up late at night to watch that on the Paramount Comedy Channel. I believe you did, Mike. I did, yeah. Because it had Mary Ann in it, who went on to be that woman that's in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it had Dr. Dick. Did you wear your mum's shoes while you were watching it, Mike? No. No. Because once again, my mum's a lesbian. <laughs> so they'd have been just up the last things, are very comfortable shoes. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, let's see what else we've got. <laughs> EastEnders. No. Yes, it was. It was the EastEnders theme tune. Oh, it was supposed to be Brookside. I did the wrong show. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 it was. It was Anita Thompson going, anyone can fall in love. <laughs> <Brooks side. laughs> Coronation Street. Yeah. Yeah, is it over? No. <laughs> is it a generation game? No. Yep. That we <laughs> It's the same. <laughs> Life is the name of the game. No. I don't know, Mike. I don't know, and quite frankly, I don't know. It was a gummy bears. Gummy bears. Oh, God, it's not anything like there and everywhere. Oh, right. Well, we'll do the last one. Oh, no, there's another one. <laughs> the generation game. There we go. That was the generation game. Well done. Now let's let's kill this off quickly. Does anybody still watching? And I'm assuming there isn't. Uh, stay with us, because after this quick break, it's that science that is. We're going to go back in time, erase that, and then. Get that time back. Welcome back to Chewing the Code. Now it's that part of the show that we call that science that is. That science, that is. So, Lee, this week we're going to play with magnets. Are we? We are. There's a lot there. There's, there's a lot there, because we're going to do some experiments with magnetisms. Ooh. Like him off X Factor. No. X-Men. Yes, like Magneto effect. Yes. Ian McKellen. Sir Ian McKellen. Mmm. Um, so, on, on your table, you should have some magnets, which are these little things here. Oh, it's stuck to my spoon, love. The, the magnets, they'll attach them to pretty much anything magnetic. Well, there's lots of them. There's lots of them, and they're quite strong. They are a lot. <laughs> Very strong magnets. They are. Okay. They are, I was about to say that. Um, <laughs> these are iridium magnets. Okay. Okay, so they're very, very strong little magnets. They're the type that they use in electrical cars. Oh, okay. Okay. So, the first thing we're going to do is make something called ferrous fluid. Some what? Ferrous fluid. Ferrous fluid? Ferrous fluid. That is day off. Okay. Okay. Um, so on your desk you should have some PVA glue. I do. Yes, okay. And you should also have um, some iron filings. Oh, you said that that was gunpowder. Like I'm going to give you gunpowder. Oh, I'm disappointed now. This is that science that is. That's <laughs> it's not, this is how to make a bomb, people, that is. And all you need to do is pop your iron filings into 
your PVA glue. Into the PVA glue. Yeah. Okay. And then give it a little stir. So you want to mix your iron filings up with your PVA glue. Give it a good mix so it's fully combined. Oh, it's a bit whiffy. Huh? A bit whiffy. It smells of PVA glue. Iron filings don't really have a smell because they're little bits of metal. Okay? Mm-hmm. And then all you want to do is use one of your magnets or some of your magnets. Okay? And you should be able to direct the flow of your iron filings in the PVA glue. Mm, yeah. yeah. You see my magnet moving with the yeah. iron filings? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's not that impressive, is it? Not really. No, um, because official ferrous fluid is made with magnesite, not iron filings. Oh, okay. okay. And it's it's made into a solvent. Now, if you get your hands on some of this at home, please be very careful with it, okay? Lee, the rule is you must not let this stuff touch the magnet at all. Okay. Because it will never come off. <gasps> okay? Can I just try? No. You may, at the end of that science, that is, you may use one magnet, but only if you're well-behaved. Ooh, exciting. And, and don't dog my experiments. Right, so in your little cupboard, you have a little back, a black tube. Let's see. I do indeed. Okay. Now, and you should also have a bowl. Yes, I do. Pop that out of the way, if it didn't. Not needed. So what you can do is pop a little bit, a little bit of your ferrous fluid into the bowl. How much is a little? Like a teaspoonful. <laughs> okay. Very thin, yes? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you get some of your some of your magnets and on the underside of your bowl, mm -hmm. yeah, pop some magnets. Underneath it. Yeah. Right. And then you should see. You should see some little spikes appear in your ferrous fluid. I do. And I see you've got little spikes. Mm. Yeah. Now that's because there are little po there's magnetic poles on magnets that are causing a reaction. Mm. It's good that, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and if you take the magnets away, it's back to being a, a liquidy thing. Mm. Okay. Now, or you should also have some little screwy things, little bolts. Yes. Okay. If you balance one of your bolts on a magnet, tip down. Yeah. Or, or you can do it with the head. It's up to you. So I've got mine. Oh. Carefully perched like that. Poison over there, out of the way. Now, if you do this on one of your little trays, if you find any problems using the tip, just use the base. There you go. And now, very carefully, yeah, yeah, drop a little bit of your ferrous fluid out of your bowl yeah. onto the tip of your screw. So I'm pouring a little bit onto the tip of the... Just on the tip of the screw, not at the bottom. On the tip. Oh. Now remember where I said don't get it on the magnet? Okay. Now, you've spoiled the next experiment, Lee. <laughs> if you gave that a very gentle blow. So you see how it's levitating? Oh, it's hovering. It's hovering. So if you blow it very gently at the bottom, it should, it should move. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. what's happening now is it's the electrical, the magnetic current is, co is causing the little spikes that we saw before. Mm-hmm. Okay, which reduces all the friction. It's then able to move. It's clever, that, isn't it? Mm. That's how maglev carriages work. How what? Maglev carriages. No idea what I'm talking about. Magnum that, carriages? Yes, yes. Carriages that contain nothing but very expensive chocolate ice cream on sticks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you like that um... experiment? No, it's okay. It's okay? Okay. Because um, what you can also do is if you take off the magnet off the, the screw, yeah, it mm. will let go 
of the liquid. Well, yours won't, because it's all over the magnet already. And it can suck it back up again. No, it didn't. It didn't? No, it's just it's just made a horrible brown mess. It's a sticky brown mess? Yeah. Okay. Which is, what, which is why we're wearing the gloves, because the, the brown mess is, yeah. Woo! But now, because I've got I've got some of the fluid on my magnet here, mm. I'm gonna get a little bit more on. Okay. Now, if you look, it's just moving about. Oh yeah, it slides around. But no friction. Oh, it's gone round and round in a circle. Is it spinning round? Yeah. Oh. Go to the left for yes, to the right, right for, for no. no. Are you there, grandmother? Okay. Now, because you've got a metal spoon, mm -hmm. yeah, you can use that or you can use your, your screw. And you can actually... Oh. Oh, dear. <gasps> I had a magnetic to do that. interaction. No, I didn't. But that's okay. That's okay. These things happen. Is that science? Right? You can use your screw or your spoon to attract the magnet and make it move. Oh. Oh, it's run away. We're keeping you up, babes. I'm, I was stifling a yawn there. Not because I was bored. Uh-huh. Um, Just because you, you hate what I'm doing again. Come on. Oh. So try using it like you do an Etch-a-Sketch. Oh, what, put it underneath? No, put it on top. All right, and then you can make it just move about like this. Mine doesn't do it. Use the tip. Ooh. Well, yours is doing it, mine isn't. Well, that's because I'm a trained scientist. Yeah. But yeah. Clever that, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Huh? Yeah. Science that works. That's the first time that's actually happened, isn't it? Mmm. Yeah. But that science that is. That science, that is. So yeah, that worked. It did, Mike, yeah. Are you impressed? Not really, but... What do you mean, not really? All the times you dog my that science, that is, and you're like, that didn't work, that was shit. <sighs> this... I, you know, I want flames. I don't... Last time we had flames, <laughs> you tried to blow it out. <laughs> uh... I want, I want pizzazz. I just don't want diarrhea on a tray. Magnetic diarrhea on Magnetic track. diarrhea. Magnetic diarrhea on a track. It is. It is. You've got levitation. It is, Mike. But it's not like the Hadron Collider, is it? It's not that... Do you know how much, would, how much that, that thing cost? Spend over. It's about fast things moving through a ring. Ah, right. Well, that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media. That's at the Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And, of course, on YouTube and podcast services, just search for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Okay. No, it's pointless. Okay. No, stop asking me to lick things again. My finger. Oh, it's your finger. Oh, it's your finger.